All right. This is quick tip number four with importing .fbx files into Maya. So let's look at another common problem that might happen. I have an FBX file here called MADLAB1. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And it'll bring up our window. Very good. And let's just import. And there it is. Okay, so this is just a collection of um, oddball bits and pieces. Somebody made a model called MADLAB. All right, and what I want to look at here first is usually go to the outliner first. And this is a common problem. Sometimes you'll import a model and it'll have all sorts of different pieces that are spread out through here. And as you choose the pieces, you can kind of see where they belong. But really, in order to work with this thing as a whole, what we want to do is select all of these uh, shapes um, or parts of the model first, and we want to group those. So I'm going to group those. And now I'll just call this one MADLAB. We'll name it uh, MADLAB Group. Okay, so now we have a nice group. So anytime we want to do a global change, like a scaling change, that'll, that'll really help out. Because if you don't scale everything together, group them first, and then scale them, then all of your model pieces are going to get way out of whack. Okay? And you don't want that. So here's what we're going to do. We went ahead and, and established the group. I'm going to go to my scale, and now I'm going to bring my scale down, scale down, and we'll sort of just bring it up so it looks like, you know, so we can kind of see what it looks like on the grid. So that looks pretty good for this. It's a fairly simple model. And now we can kind of roll out and look at the different parts. And over here in the uh, Hypershade, you'll notice where none of the materials really came in with this, um, with this import. So not to worry. Basically, you're going to texture this stuff by yourself anyway, because it's that's not really that many things to texture. And um, we can sort of use these UVs that are already set up for all our various objects here and just sort of do some custom materials for these. So that's no big deal. But one thing you might want to do, um, you, you'll notice that over here, if I, we go to Material 1, and let's see here, we could go ahead and, and right mouse click and let's select objects with that material. So let's see what's on Material number 1. Uh, I don't really see anything showing up like immediately that's highlighted so I may want to choose a different one let's say we choose just material 18 and I'll right mouse click on there and select select the objects with that material well none of, nothing's happening there either so sometimes you might get lucky with having some materials assigned to you know some various elements that you don't have to set up a network for but in this case none of these things are really active at all so i may just choose one of these objects right here and we'll take a look at the uh, attribute editor over here and material number 37 okay so this this technically is material number 37 and over here, that would be material number 37 right there. So if I went over here, right mouse clicked, select the object with that material, now we can see it showing up. So, you know, technically we could, you know, use this material and, and do whatever we want with it. Um, in this case, it depends on what that material is. It's a, a fong, we can see here. And that's kind of a standard default thing. You know, lots of these things will either be a, like a fong or, or maybe a blend. So, um, you know, we have a material that's starting out. But in this case, there's so many of them over here. I, I might just want to create materials for each of these um, elements uh, uh, by, by themselves. So I could maybe select the whole entire group right here and just right mouse click on there and assign an existing material of our standard Lambert one. So now it's sort of consistent, and when you come into the hypershade, you can basically come to your edit and then delete unused nodes. And so that gets rid of all of those, those unused nodes, and now we can start texturing and building you know, materials for each one of these surfaces. So um, that's kind of cool. So there you have it. That's just a way to clean up a, a quick scene and, you know, you can kind of, in this case, you could use, you know, the UVs and you could sort of choose faces or, or whatever and just start doing your texturing from there. So anyway, 
there it is. That's the Mad Lab. And that's what it looks like. And that's just another quick tip of something that'll happen to you along the way with these .fbx imports. So make sure the lesson here was to group those underneath a single group before you start doing anything with it. So come to your outliner first and group it. All right. Okay. Thanks again for watching. Read a book and be a good person and stop back for the next tip.